Okay, Clancy. I'm back, and I want to talk about a better way to do this, and I don't know if the question was poorly phrased or what, but this is a quadratic environment, and as we saw, we can take this and foil it out. 5x squared minus 20x plus 3x minus 12. So this is a quadratic equation. And if I wanted to express all the possible solutions, right, there's a number of x comma y values that make this thing true. And because it's a relation, a function, where when you put in certain x values, it gives you a bunch of y values, the number of solutions is infinite. I could choose x value of 1, and it would give me one answer. I could choose an x value of 2, it would give me a different answer. I could choose x value of 5. And I could do that all day long. So graphically expressing this is a reasonable way to do it, <clears throat> because it does convey all the possible solutions, or at least a graphical representation of all those solutions. So if you begin with it in this form, you've already taken one important step to be able to graph it. It's one step better than standard form, because it's already factored. The reason it's better is because in the factored form, I can identify what are the points for x when y is equal to zero. These are also called the x-intercepts. And if I were to set this expression equal to zero, then I know that these two things, these chunks, multiply together to make zero. And the only way that can happen through the zero product property is if one of them is zero. So either 5x plus 3 equals zero or x minus 4 equals zero. If the 5x plus 3 is equal to zero, then x is equal to negative 3 fifths. If the x minus 4 is equal to 0, then x is equal to 4. What this gives me then is an ability to graph this thing using what we call the five-point method. <clears throat> so I need to plot these two points on the x-axis. So I'm going to go with, um, decimals are a little bit difficult to deal with, so I'm going to go with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Can I do this? Let's go by um, 2 and a half. I'm going to go by 2 and a half spaces is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. And that means each space is one two and a half. And that's very complicated. Which is point four. Well, we've got negative three divided by five, which is negative point six. So in other words, I can go over half of that because this is really um, if each of these spaces is one two and a half, then each one is two fifths. And so this is really negative two fifths minus another one-fifth, or half the way. So this is the point negative three-fifths. That's an odd way to do this, but because of the numbers, that's kind of what we're forced to do. So these are the two x-intercepts, and that means that my parabola looks something like this. Well, how can I find other values that are relevant? The easiest way to do it would be to recognize this five-point idea, that there are five critical points in any parabola, they include the x-intercepts that we've already found now, because that was the easy part. We should be able to find the y-intercept, because the y-intercept is what happens when the x-part is equal to zero. Therefore, if I take my whole expression and every place there was an x, I put in a zero. This part goes away, this part goes away, and I'm left with y is equal to negative 12. Now I know that we're going to have to get down to about negative 27 from our previous discussion. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Looks like I can go by about 3. So I'm going to go to negative 3, negative 6, negative 9. So negative 12 is right there. I'm going to make that my y-intercept. In other words, my parabola is coming down and hitting the y-axis there. Now what's interesting about this is the parabola has symmetry. That means that it's balanced like a butterfly, both sides. So there exists some line right down the middle here that's exactly halfway. And the parabola is balanced on both sides of this. 
So if in fact this one went over one, two, three of these little half spaces, or one and a half space, and then down one, two, three, four spaces, we can expect the same from here. If I go over one and a half spaces, I can go down one, two, three, four spaces. And that'll also be a point on the parabola. It's going to be the mirror image of that y-intercept. And now we do have to find this place in the middle. And so the line of symmetry will be the average of the two x-intercepts. So if I take negative 3 fifths plus 4 and divide that by 2, that'll give me the x value of that line right up the middle. So how do I combine these two? Well, one's a fraction, one's a whole number, so I better put them in a common denominator. I'm going to change this one. I'm going to take 4 and put it over 5. When I do that, I have to multiply the top times 5 as well. In other words, it's 20 fifths. So now I've got x is equal to negative 3 fifths plus 20 fifths over 2, which gives me x is equal to positive 17 over 5 over 2. Well, dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half. So this becomes 17 tenths. In other words, x is equal to 17 tenths. Well, this is what we got previously. So that's 1 and 7 tenths, which is 1. And then if these are 5 spaces along here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, Five. <clears throat> if we were to cut those in half, 2, 4, 6, 7 tenths would be right there. This would be the point 17 tenths. And if I were to plug that value back into the equation, in other words, find y is equal to 5 times 17 tenths squared. y is equal to 5 times 17 tenths squared minus 7 times 17, 17 times 17 tenths minus 12. That would give me the value of y that matches with this line of symmetry. <clears throat> so I could do this out by hand if I wanted. Uh, 289 one hundredths minus 289 tenths minus 12. So that cancels to make 289 twentieths. And this is going to be, uh, okay, so we'll put those into 20ths as well, which is 5, 65, 78, 20ths. And this has to be in 20ths, so it's minus 240, 20ths. <clears throat> so these two combine them and make 289, 20ths, minus 778, 20ths which means that together that makes 500 and, what is that going to be? So if I do 7, 7, 8 minus 2, 89, that's going to be 9. Take all the way from there, 6, 1, 18, so 6, that's going to take all the way from there. That's going to be 8, 4, 4, 8, 9. That's about right. 7, 78 minus 2, 89. try this in just a second. <clears throat> Sorry, I made a mistake here. So this is going to be uh, 700, 818. And then when I take 818 minus 289, I get 529 over 20ths. And this will be a negative number, which is equal to 26.45 negative. So in other words, my vertex is going to be 26.45 down. My coordinate of the vertex is the x value from line of symmetry, 17 tenths, and the y value that resulted when I plugged that line of symmetry value back in, negative 26.45. So if I did these, I've already found this axis of symmetry. I know that it's somewhere down here. And then if I did negative 26, that's almost negative 27, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27. It's almost there. There's my vertex.
And what that gives me is this parabola using the five point. It does also work with the idea of uh, doing the vertex form because the vertex form, as we discovered in the other one, gives us this same vertex. But the thing about the vertex form is you usually then want to go over one up one, over two up four, over three up nine because it's a quadratic relationship. And these points are not going to be exactly one or two or three points away because this is such an odd line of symmetry. Anyway, challenge.